Good morning, everybody. My name is Deborah Brown, Deborah Burns Psychology Services, known across social media as DB Psychology. This morning, I'm going to talk about this week's blog, which was all about um, eight warning signs that you shouldn't ignore for good mental health. Um, I want to preference this by saying we all have mental health. Um, most of us still consider mental health um, to be something that somebody else suffers from. Um, where in fact we should be thinking of it in terms of taking care of our mental health just the way we look after our physical health. Um, and I think that if you can get that into your head, if you can get that idea that it's your mental health should be treating treated as well as you treat your physical health, then, um, you know, you're going a long way towards helping yourself. Now, the eight topics that I talk about in the blog this week, um, and the blog is a bit long, so forgive me, um, but they are all issues that if you are having problems with any of them, um, any any individual ones, you should tackle immediately. Because what happens is they trigger out into, um, you know, uh, other conditions so I'll go through some of those in a minute, but they can trigger out into other conditions and things can develop quite rapidly, um, although they build slowly and very, very, you know, it's almost subtly at first when we have problems, when we have these a little few of these problems, we think, oh, it's only a few little things and we, we let them go. We let them go because we're so stressed or so busy and so running around the place that we we let let things slide a little bit and we don't realize how long we've let them slide for and then suddenly or we we think it's a sudden thing we have an issue um you know we could have something as simple as very stressed out or burnt out or we could develop um other conditions anxiety um you know depression or we could something very serious could actually happen and we think this happens overnight it doesn't it is actually a build up very 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 gradually and this is what happens so that's why i say to you always tackle these immediately try and tackle them as quickly as possible it is more effective if you do so um and the response is quicker so let's let's get into it this morning so the first one of course is always sleep um Sleep is a huge problem in Ireland. Um, about 60% of adults in Ireland, in fact, have uh, sleep problems. So you're not alone if you do. Um, please see your GP if you are, you know, if you've been putting it on the long finger and you're having problems with your sleep. Um, and, and it is a question with all of these of becoming aware of our lifestyle and becoming more aware of what's going on in our lives because it's generally what's going on within our lives is going to feed into these problems. So sleep is going to feed into your sleep. So as I said, I've talked about sleep before. Please check out the blog on sleep. Um, and it is a massive problem. It's causing one in five deaths on our roads. Um, 60% of uh, you know the adult population in Ireland has problems with sleep. So it is a massive problem. It is an absolute massive problem that we need to tackle and we need to tackle it head on. We don't see that having a sleep problem um, can lead us down the road. As I said, it builds up very, very gradually, but can lead to other problems. But if you think about it, um, most conditions, if you're looking, you know, what, what um, symptoms there are for most conditions, sleep will be one of them. And the next one that I'm going to talk about is weight or dietary intake. Um, that will also be um, an indicator of most conditions. So most people think um, anorexia, bulimia or binge eating disorder, you know, you've got mental health problems. If that's what that's what you have. But most people don't realize the precursor to all this is how you handle uh, eating when you're stressed. It's always a good indicator. It's always like a, a barometer, a good barometer to see how when I get stressed, even minor stress, how do I tackle my eating? Do I undereat? Do I overeat? Um, and it's usually one or the other. You know, we leave overeat because we're trying to cover it um, or we won't, won't eat too stressed. So looking at how we react to stress in connection with our food is a pretty good indication of 
um, you know, your state of your mental health. So if you can become more aware, this is, I'm trying to get you to become more aware. How are you, um, how I'm trying to get you more aware and how are you, you know, using, you know, how is sleep affected? How is your eating affected? All could be good, could be indicators that there is another, um, it, it could be an indicator that there is another un um but it could be a bigger indicator that there is something else and it could be something else at play here um hopefully it is just minor stress and you can get that tackled very quickly um but if you are stressed and you've been putting it off you will eventually lead to burnout and to other mental health conditions um, it could develop into an eating disorder it could develop into you know depression or anxiety or that so you know how are you using food to control the situation you're in another good question to ask yourself um, the third point I talk about is substance abuse this week now most people think of substance abuse as illegal drugs guess what it's not um it's not just illegal drugs it's uh we've got prescription drug problem uh that needs to be tackled um so are you using prescription drugs you've got to ask yourself that but most of the time people most people it'll be caffeine uh your coffee your tea your chocolate what are you using those for um it'll also be alcohol and cigarettes um, most people when they're stressed, they will, um, you know, they will start to, if they smoke, if that's your thing, you smoke, you will start to smoke more. You will increase your smoking. You've got to ask yourself, how much am I actually drinking? Has that increased over the last few months? What's going on? If you're starting to notice, oh, I'm taking a glass of wine or I have to have a couple of glasses of wine or I have to have a couple of, couple of beers every time I come home from work. You've got to ask yourself the question, what's going on in work? You've got to ask yourself what's going on at home. Why am I using these substances? Why are they increasing? And usually it is an indicator that there is something else going on. Again, as I said, it's all about um, becoming aware of what we're using, food, you know, our sleep is sleep problems, our, uh, you know, our alcohol maybe is increasing or, you know, if we smoke, it's our cigarette. Another two things you can put in there is gaming. We always blame the kids. Too much gaming. Um, very, very addictive. Um, social media. As adults, we use social media. Um, how much are you spending time on the phone? What are you doing? You know, how much time do you waste on the phone? Are you using it to disassociate? Are you using it? The same way as you could say somebody has a problem with, with alcohol. We have to question this. Has that increased? Am I coming home and instead of interacting with my children, am I using social media? Instead of interacting with friends and family, am I on social media instead of interacting with them? Then it's a problem, guys. This is, they are highly addictive. That's why they want to have phones. They are highly addictive. Just as addictive as cigarettes and alcohol. Um, so please take a look at that. And the next one will be, and we blame we blame this one on t teens a lot. Again, it's the um, changes in personality. We all think about the change in personality, withdrawing from friends and family, um, acting out, um, over the top reactions. Um, but these are adult problems, they're not just teen problems. Um, and if this is happening, and you find yourself overreacting to the situation in hand. You've got to ask yourself, what else is going on in my life? It is not the situation that you've dealt with just now. It's not the situation you just reacted to. It is usually a case that you are too stressed or something else is feeding into this and you're not expressing your anger. You're not expressing your emotions, all your emotions in some way. And you aren't handling a particular situation, whether it be in work or in your personal life. And you need help with that. You need help. If you are find yourself and you're overreacting to the kids, then there's something else underlying that that needs to be tackled. It isn't the children. It isn't 
um, you, maybe it is an external force, external to you, that, um, you know, is highly stressful. You need, again, early warning sign, you need to be looking at it. What do I need to do? I need to see somebody in this case because I need to talk this through. I need to maybe review my life. Um, if your lack of self-care, and I always, always, always harp on about self-care, if you are not doing the basics of self-care, you have a problem. You really have a problem um, because you're letting it slide because, again, usually external forces are forcing you to um, not look after yourself. Then you have a major problem. You already have a major problem um, and you need to be coming to somebody like me. You need to be talking to somebody like me, usually an indicator props, uh, stress, burnout, depression, uh, anxiety. There's a whole host of sim. You know, it could be a um, a symptom of a whole host of mental health issues. But if you are not taking care of your basic self care at the minimum, then you have a problem. You really do have a problem, and you need to be talking to somebody. Your GP contact somebody like me. Um, risky behavior. Again, we always, as adults, we always blame this on on the kids. But if you think about it, spending too much, are you spending outside your income level? Um, drinking, again, we talked about the drinking and the drugs. Um, you know, driving too fast. Have you started to notice you're putting the put down a bit too much? Or you're rushing from place to place. If you are rushing from place to place, you have too much on your plate. You really do have too much on your plate if you're rushing. If you haven't got enough time to, you know, to get from A to B in enough time, then you have too many things on your plate. Again, a life review is needed. So, you know, you've got to think about that. Um, when we talk about sex, again, risk behavior, too many partners. Um, you know, is it, it, what are you doing there? Like, is it, you know, are you having sex without a condom? If that's what you need. If, you know, if you're not in a monogamous relationship, you've got to think, am I, you know, what am I doing here? Is this, am I using sex as a self-soothing thing it, it can be good and bad bad okay there's nothing wrong with sex it's quite healthy everybody does it even old grannies like me so you know you've got to think am i using this as a risky behavior you, you've got to judge that for yourself and your own lifestyle is this become a risky behavior for me um and then of course the self-harm um we always think again with self-harm that it is a teen problem no it's not it is an adult problem too. We don't realize that. We don't realize that um, the eating disorders as well, as I mentioned earlier, can become a problem in later life. Um, it, it, they don't just start in teens. We, we, we don't think about that, that they don't just start in teens. They can start in later life. And it's men and women, guys. It's not just a girl, you know, a young teenage girl anymore. It is um, a guy thing as well. So think about that. And the last two then would be a sense of hopelessness and a feeling of being overwhelmed. Um, you can you can read the two to the two small blogs on those, the two small uh, paragraphs there on those. But again, if you are feeling uh, a sense of hopelessness or you're feeling overwhelmed or both, please, that's an absolute indicator. You must go and talk to somebody. Um, it's time now to say, okay, I'm going to tackle this. I, I'm I have to reach out. I need help. So, you know, think about it. Sometimes if you're feeling overwhelmed, it can be a case that um, you might be too overwhelmed, but you, you need to start reviewing your life. Now, how do you do that? First off, you become aware. You become absolutely more aware. And I'm talking about all the eight symptoms here. You become more aware of how you're living your life. Um, what are you doing? You're going to do a life review um who am i doing it for is it my is it really my responsibility and if 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 it isn't my responsibility can i hand it back and if you can't if you cannot hand back somebody else's responsibility to them um for the most part i'd say you have a problem if it's so you know i'm not talking about children or if you have um a, d a dependent a dependent relative here if you are you're taking on a responsibility for them but maybe it's a you know, maybe it's time then to ask for help. 
Maybe it's time to, you don't have to do this by yourself. Okay, so with those kind of two categories with children and with um, with a dependent relative, so, you know, that you, that you need to look after, then you need help. You need to be asking for help. Can I ask for help? Um, I'm talking about taking on responsibilities here for other people that are quite capable of doing it for themselves. If you can't hand that back to them, you have a problem. Um, it's going to, it, it's called um, a codependency. So you need to look that up and you need to have a look at it. Um, again, uh, control issues. Can you let go of things that are out of your control? If you cannot let go of things that are out of your control, again, you would have a problem. We have to let these things go. It, it's, it's something we can learn to do. It's something we learned not to do. So it is something we can unlearn. Um, the other things I would say to you is look at your stress levels. Um, look at taking ownership of your life, looking at your basic self-care and look at your negative thinking patterns. And how we can get in touch with our negative thinking patterns is uh, meditation. I, ha you know, I can't recommend that highly enough. We need to look at meditation. Meditation will help you calm the mind, will help you quieten the mind and allow you to see what thought patterns are going on in your head. So it'll help with the procrastination um, as well as the negative thinking patterns and a whole host of other things. And I do talk more about those. I've talked about them before and how you can help yourself. So those are the eight symptoms um, or eight warning signs that we should be watching. Um, do check out this week's blog. It's at www.debrabyrnpsychologyservices.com and um, Monday's blog um i was going to say it's a it's it's actually a mid-year review uh on resolutions but i will have to check that out i think it is um i write these blogs so far in ahead i'm sorry um i think it is um so do check that out because there's an awful lot of questions in that that will help you do a life review um as well as you know kind of get your new year's resolutions that we all left behind in march um or in february um behind they will help you get them back on track um i've also included a business section there so if you're a business owner you can have a look at those as well um so that's on monday and i'll say good morning and hello of course to deirdre and kim and colette and jennifer and all those that tune in every saturday morning you're brilliant um and um i will see you all again next saturday morning and i will talk about that life review bye